Hi and welcome to All Things Marvelous. I'm John Paul and today we're going to be talking about some new things the Blender team are working on which I think could be absolutely massive. They're looking into three new modeling systems, each with its own unique strengths, and hopefully by the end of the video, you'll know exactly why these things matter and how it could change the way we create things in Blender. Don't worry though, mesh modeling isn't going away. Instead, Blender is planning on incorporating these into the current system, giving us entirely new ways to shape our 3D models. So, what are we looking at? Well, according to the latest announcement from BlenderCon 2024, I say announcement, I mean a very small, quick paragraph at the end of the BlenderCon development roadmap, the team is working on three really powerful modeling systems, NURBS, Sign Distance Fields, or SDF, and the current YouTube favorite, Gaussian Splatting. Each of these techniques is already widely used in the industry, but Blender is finally bringing them together in a way that could completely shift how we think about modeling in the program. Let's dive in and break them down one by one. First up is NURBS. If you've ever worked in industrial design, you've probably heard of this. NURBS stands for Non-Uniform Rational B-Splines, and it's been a stable in CAD software, 3ds Max, and Maya for ages. Blender technically already has a NURBS implementation, but it's quite limited. The way NURBS works is fundamentally different from mesh modeling. Instead of polygons, you define a series of control points that form smooth mathematical perfect curves. You can see this when you use Bezier curves as well. This makes it incredible for designing things like cars, planes, and product prototypes. Anything that demands flawless curves and extreme precision in close-ups. The downside, however, NURBS isn't great for organic modeling. It's slow, especially in real-time applications, and it's way overkill for VFX or game assets, where ultra-precise geometry isn't necessary. But for those of you in product visualization or 3D printing, this could be brilliant. Next, SDF modeling. This one is cool. Forget vertices, forget edge loops, forget topology entirely. Instead of building shapes from points and faces, SDF constructs objects mathematically using something called signed distance fields. Imagine every point in space having a value that tells you how far it is from the surface of an object. If it's outside, it's positive. If it's inside, it's negative. This means no messy geometry, no polygon flow to worry about, just pure intuitive shape creation. It's like sculpting with digital clay, except you can use powerful Boolean functions, addition, subtraction, intersections to shape objects like they're made of putty. This is really exciting for a few reasons. One, it's incredibly intuitive. If you've ever struggled with mesh modeling, SDF feels like magic. You just shape, subtract, and refine. It eliminates the headache of topology. No more fixing bad edge flow or retopologizing messy sculpts, something I'm certainly guilty of. It's fully non-destructive, which is awesome. Since you're working with mathematical functions, you can go back and tweak your shape at any time, and it handles smooth surfaces beautifully, without the need for insane subdivision levels. If you want to try it now, there's an add-on called Kunja SDF. It's a paid add-on, but it might be worth it if it's something you've really been looking for. Finally, there's the current YouTube favorite, Gaussian Splatting. You've probably seen this on many videos, and this one's completely different. It's not really a modeling tool in the traditional sense, it's more like photogrammetry. Gaussian Splatting doesn't create geometry at all. Instead, it reconstructs 3D scenes using points that store color and opacity, and then dynamically adjust them to create incredible realistic images. Think of it like a point cloud that softens and blends together into a seamless render. You just record a video or take a bunch of photos from different angles, feed them into a program like Polycam or Reality Capture, and as if by magic, a 3D scene appears. So why use Gaussian splatting instead of traditional photogrammetry? The big reason is reflections. With standard photogrammetry, all the texture and lighting data is baked in, meaning you can't really relight your object realistically. But with Gaussian splatting, the reflections change based on your viewing angle, making everything look much more lifelike with zero effort. Right now, Blender doesn't officially support it, but there are some workarounds, if you're interested. There's a great tutorial by Default Cube that walks you through the process. I'll link it in the description. Also, the Corridor crew did a great video about the future of VFX set design using the technique, which I'll also link below. 
So what does this mean for Blender users? Well, we're looking at a future where 3D artists have more choices than ever. Mesh modeling will always be the backbone of Blender, but now we'll have the powerful alternatives. NURBS for ultra precise industrial design, SDF for intuitive non-destructive modeling, and Gaussian splatting for effortless photorealistic scene capture. The possibilities are huge, and the fact that Blender is actively working on integrating these systems means in a few years' time, the way we approach modeling might look completely different. That's obviously if AI doesn't come in and make it all obsolete. Obviously, I'm joking, of course, no matter how good AI gets, I think there'll always be a creative space for people making things on their own. So. We still don't know too much on how these tools will integrate into Blender's existing workflow or how the performance will hold up, but this could be the beginning of a broader shift toward procedural and more intuitive modeling. Only time will tell, but one thing's for sure, Blender is evolving faster than ever and I'm here for it. So, what do you think? Are you excited about SDF modeling? Do you see yourself using Gaussian splatting in your workflow? Are you hyped for proper NURB support in Blender? Let's talk about it in the comments don't forget to subscribe and I'll catch you on the next video.